So do you guys want to find out which one of these four air filters produce the most horsepower? Well, in this video, we're back at counter steer, and we're gonna put the Honda Ridgeline on the dyno, and we're gonna find out. So, let's get this started. Alrighty, so we're gonna be doing three tests for each and every single one of the filters. We're gonna start off with two uh, tests with the hood closed, to simulate driving scenarios as requested by the community and then we're going to do the third pull and we're going to have the hood open and we're just going to see if there's going to be a variance for all of the filters throughout this entire test so with that information we're going to continue Alrighty, dylan so i was wondering if you can go through the procedures on if somebody wanted to go ahead and tune on a ridge line in the future what do they need to do so we found that it needs to be in sand mode with traction control off and the what is this here again? Collision mitigation. Yep, that needs to be off because it doesn't like the dyno fan in front of the car. Uh, it will try to apply the brakes. You'll feel an ABS pulse. If you don't have it in sand mode, it will want to downshift when you go to do a full throttle pull. Uh, once you do have it, all three of those areas situated, you have to get past 2,500 RPMs in first gear lightly lift off the gas pedal and it will shift to second then it appears that it doesn't want to shift into third until you go past 4,000 rpms in second lightly lift off the gas again uh, and from there you can't make the third gear full throttle pull until you're at 4,000 rpms then you can mat the gas it will not downshift and that's the best we've found so far that works for this uh, dyno test all right thank you dylan drop-in air filter and we're going to proceed with the test again doing two with the hood closed and then one with the hood open So the OEM air box is removed and we're moving on to the Takeda air filter. And just in case for this test, the Takeda does have this small little window. We're going to do a fourth run just for fun to find out if that window, if you remove that piece, will it increase horsepower, maybe make it sound better. I don't know, we're going to find out. So we're going to do four runs with this one. We're going to do two uh, with the hood closed, one with the hood open, and then one with the hood open and that piece removed. So now we have the AEM drop-in performance filter put in, and we're going to see how well it does. So let's continue with all these tests. So now that we're complete with the dyno, we're going to go take all the results and we're going to see which one of them actually gains the most horsepower. Now today it was roughly around 
55 degrees. Last time we were here, it was around 70 degrees at the dyno, at least outside. Inside, it's a little bit warmer. Um, but we're gonna see if there are any significant differences between the dynos and all these filters here. So let's go ahead and go look at these graphs. So all the runs were done in a third gear and third gear has a gear ratio of 1.485 to one. The wheel horsepower will be a little bit higher in this gear, but the numbers for the horsepower gains or losses are still relevant. Now, first let's take a look at the OEM dyno chart and our control. The first run is red, second run is blue, and the third run with the hood open is green. Right off the bat, we can see that it's very consistent for all the runs with a slight change on the second run where we see the dip at 57,000 RPMs. We can also see that there was no significant difference between the hood open and the hood closed. The first run, peak power was made at 242.23 horsepower. The chart shows 255.37 horsepower, but that's after the gear change and there was a spike. Um, the second made 236.01 horsepower, and the third made 243.39 horsepower for an average of 240.54 horsepower. The torque is fairly even across the board at 232 torque, with an average of 232.23 peak torque. I also wanted to know what the average was for the lower RPM range, and so just as a random point, I chose to look at the 4500 RPM to see how all the runs were doing below the VTEC. First run made 196.77 horsepower, second run made 194.38 horsepower, and the third run made 195.16 horsepower for an average of 195.44 horsepower, and the torque averaged in at 227.92 torque. Next up is the AEM drop-in filter. Again, the first run is red, second run is blue, and the third run with the hood open is green. Again, the graphs look fairly consistent, but has a larger variances between them. On the second run, we see a similar dip at 57 RPMs, just as in the OEM drop-in filter, which is quite interesting. We can also see that there was no significant difference between the hood open and closed. However, having the hood open did result in the best horsepower numbers and torque. The first run peak power was 241.27 horsepower, second made 238.42 horsepower, and the third made 245.52 horsepower for an average of 241.74 horsepower. The torque jumped around a little bit at 237, 233, and 236, but it averaged in at 235.57 peak torque. For the 4500 RPM range, the first run made 194.61 horsepower, second run made 184.72 horsepower, and the third run made 193.52 horsepower for an average of 190.95 horsepower. The torque averaged in at 222.67 torque. Next up is the AFE Takeda air filter. First run is red, second run is blue, third run is with the hood open and is green, and the fourth run where I remove the cover is in orange. Now this graph has a similar low end graph, but after 5400 RPMs, everything is just kind of out of whack and not consistent. We can also see that only the first run varied between the hood open and the hood closed significantly while the rest were fairly similar. So the AFE does result in greater variances while conducting this hood open and closed comparison. The first run peak power was 245.07 horsepower. The second made 230.61 horsepower. The graph is reading the wrong RPM range, so it's not valid. The third made 240.40 horsepower for an average of 238.69 horsepower. The torque also jumped around a lot from 227, 230, and 235 torque for an average of 231.37 peak torque. So not counting the fourth run in the final results, but we can see that the fourth one was the worst one. Peaking at 222 horsepower, again, the graph is reading at the 6700 RPM range because of the gear change, and 226.27 peak torque. Both those numbers significantly lower than the average. If you have this air filter, I would recommend not to run without that piece installed as it seems to significantly impact performance. For the 4,500 RPM range, horsepower first made around 189.49, second run made 192.41 horsepower, and the third run made 195.45 horsepower, for an average of 192.45 horsepower. Torque averaged in at 224.43. Finally, we look at the AEM performance filter. First run is red, second run is blue, and the third run with the hood open is green again. The graph here it looks very consistent with no significant difference between the hood open and the hood closed. The graph here is also the best in regards that the engine is climbing steadily all the way through the entire power band and only dropping off right at the end when it changes gears. 
The first run peak power was 241.97 horsepower, second made 236.39 horsepower, and the third run made 242.35 horsepower for an average of 240.24 horsepower. The torque is fairly steady throughout the entire range with an average of 225.32 peak torque. For the 4,500 RPM range, the first run made 181.65 horsepower, the second run made 181.82 horsepower, and the third run made 179.03 horsepower for an average of 180.83 horsepower. The torque averaged in at 210.87. So here is a graph showing all the best performing runs for each of the air filters as well as the readings at the 4500 RPM range. You can pause this video here if you want to look at it in more detail before we move on to the final breakdown. So breaking down all the information that I've gathered, we have the final results for the peak power outputs over 5500 RPMs. In first place, we have the AEM drop-in filter. It produced the highest average horsepower at 241.74 horsepower, which is half a percent increase over the factory intake and an average of 235.57 torque, which is a 1.44% increase over the stock OEM filter. Second place goes to the OEM filter and it's our control at 240.54 horsepower and 232.23 torque. And in third place, we have the AEM Performance Air Filter, which produce on average 240.24 horsepower, which is 0.12% less than the stock, and an average of 225.32 torque, which is 3.07% less from stock. And finally, in fourth place, we have the Takeda Intake with an average of 238.69 horsepower, which is a loss of 0.78%, and an average of 231.37 torque, which is also a loss of 0.37%. Moving on to the earlier power band at the 4500 RPM reading, we have the following. First place, we have the OEM filter, which is our control producing on average 195.44 horsepower and on average 227.92 torque. Second place, we have the AFE Takeda intake, producing on average 192.45 horsepower, which is 1.55% less efficient over stock, and an average of 234.43 torque, which is 1.56% loss over stock. In third place, we have the AEM drop-in, which produced an average of 190.95 horsepower, which is 2.35 less efficient over stock, and on average 222.67 torque, which is a loss of 2.36 over the stock air filter. Coming in in last place is the AEM Performance Filter with an average of 180.83 horsepower, which is a loss of 8.08% and an average of 210.87 torque, which is also a loss of 8.09% over the stock air filter. From the data, the results show that the air boxes produce the most power in the lower power band range, but once you move over 5000 RPMs, the AEM filters begin to make up ground producing more power. So to wrap up the video, these results were all done on the same day with about 15 to 20 minutes break between each of the four air filters and the first OEM run was taken after the vehicle warmed up on the dyno. As in the last video, Dylan learned how to operate the Honda Ridgeline on the dyno and he again performed the dyno for all these tests. We can see that the graphs are very similar and consistent so we both feel confident with these results. I'm also not choosing a side trying to promote one product better than another other than just try to get you guys real world tests done as best as I can to inform you on your decisions when purchasing a filter. So like any of my tests, these numbers are not definitive as there are variances that could affect anything that I do. And I just try to do the best I possibly can to make sure that I can keep it as even and as fair for all of the products. Next up, I'll be attempting to get this truck on the track to see how these air filters translate to actual driving conditions. We're going to see if there's actually any performance gains that can be realized and noticed in a quarter mile drag. So make sure that you like this video and are subscribed to the channel to keep up on all the latest video releases. Thanks for watching.